Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and the 6.5 is live in the Micron booth at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. I hope you can feel all the excitement around. Maybe not hear too much of the excitement so you can listen to us, but Dan, is this a big year or what? It is a big year and that's been thematic in the conversations that we've had, Pat, in the briefings, in the advisory sessions, and also on all the videos that the 6.5 has done here. The executive interactions, customer interactions, everybody seems to feel pretty optimistic and the energy here at the show, I think people are doing business, which yes. is why we're yes. all here. As we've always said, Daniel, on our shows, there's a triad of things that have to come together to make devices work, and that's compute, connectivity, and memory and storage. And you know, memory and storage doesn't get enough of the conversation, but quite frankly, if you don't have those three moving at the same time, the technology does not move forward. And it's just the coincidence that we have here, uh, folks from uh, Micron and Qualcomm, Ziad, Chris, how you doing? Very well, good. thanks for coming on the show. Thank Ziad, you you're me. a uh, you're a veteran to the 6.5. Chris, I think this is your first time. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, so Pat, you said it pretty nicely. I mean, you're absolutely right. Take the memory and storage out of the equation and all that compute doesn't do a whole lot, does it? Nope. So having Micron and Qualcomm here, I think maybe a great place to start is just kind of the overall uh, overview of the partnership. So, you know, Chris, why don't you jump in first and love to hear a little bit from you guys about kind of what is the partnership that's going on between Micron and Qualcomm? Sure, I think you said it great in the beginning. Um, in order to have any compute work, it has to have memory, it has to have storage, yeah. right? That's one of the, the fundamental building blocks of any compute system. Uh, and we work very closely together um, on the forefront of new technologies, new interfaces. Really happy with your launch of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 was coupled with our launch of DDR5X, which is the fastest LP uh, DDR in the market today. And we did that last November, that was very That's exciting. Right. Um, so we work very closely together, uh, integrating our products to make sure that our mutual customers yeah. can take them, run them seamlessly, so that their customers, you, get to use the devices. Appreciate that. Do you got any comments on the uh, on the partnership to start? Yeah, I, I think Micron has been a great partner for us. As you know, we built this amazing platform, but there's so much that goes around it. One of the critical pieces, of course, is memory. And we have had a long-standing partnership with Micron, and specifically in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, we were able to bring in the new LPDDR5X, uh, much more capable, able to really enable all the amazing things we are packing into our products, but it requires that memory and storage solution and partners like Micron allow us to make it happen. Yeah, so let's do the double click on the value of memory to, to the SOC, to the user experience. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to talk about the future uh, uh, in a little bit. We're going yeah. to talk about the future in the future, but yep. how about the, the the here and now? Like you talked about yeah. LPDDR5X. Like what's the benefit? What's the improvement yeah. to the end user experience? You know, smartphone is this amazing platform. Every user still wants more. I mean, we do survey <laughs> regularly and they want the device to have better camera. By the way, be, thank goodness. Thank right? goodness for that, <laughs> indeed, indeed, yeah. right? They want better cameras, they want to do more gaming, they want new use cases, they want to have a virtual assistant. Yeah. What does that mean inside the device? It means now at the same time you might have a camera running, along with the AI processing that's happening on that camera, and all of that requires you to have basically large neural models that need to sit in the memory, be able to brought out to the SOC. Right. And then the other thing that's really happening is what people don't realize is, in the past, many times, these use cases were such that you ran one or the other use case. Now you run them concurrently, Yeah. right? So you have the camera running, the AI running, you might be doing a, a telephony call with that, you have your Microsoft Teams session going on on the side, at the same time you're sending an email. That means actually the emphasis and the stress on the SOC, but also on the, on the surrounding pieces, including memory and storage, is pretty massive. And that's where we really need that additional bandwidth and partners like Micron course come into play over there, so we work very closely with them, and with 8 Gen 2, we were able to actually show the first LP5X working with Micron. Love it. So the whole process, though, Ziad, of, of making the selection of a partner like Micron, you have choices. Mm -hmm. Just like every smartphone device maker has a choice whether or not to, to use the Snapdragon yep. 8 Gen 2. Right. Talk a little bit about kind of the whole thinking behind that selection yeah. process. What sort of made you say, hey, this is our flagship device, we know the you know, the interdependence that storage and memory have on making this thing go, yep. Micron's the right partner for us. Yeah, so we, of course, have a platform, like I said, we have multiple customers. And of course, we're talking more from a Snapdragon uh, as in a smartphone-like application perspective. But we have a lot of emphasis today on automotive, on uh, PC, on XR, on auto as well. So we, of course, enable multiple partners across all of those different uh, businesses. 
Of course, we are choosing the people who are able to show our products in the best light. And with the usage of memory, you want, of course, a partner where you're able to get best-in-class power consumption, best-in-class experience. So we actually set up labs where we have all our partners come in and essentially take our device through the paces such that we are able to deliver something to a customer where they can launch extremely quickly to the market. Time to market is absolutely critical. So this early engagement that we have with partners like Micron allow us to be able to ship these parts quickly and to be able to ship multiple uh, partners at the same time. Of course, each partner has different reasons to go with a particular uh, memory vendor or other. So Chris, it always amazes me how when we have a major launch and the device you know, containing SOC, storage and memory all shows up on the first day mm -hmm. and it magically works. Now, I'm an insider, was an insider in the industry and, and kind of see how it works, but I'm, but I'm curious though, how does Micron get ahead of the curve mm -hmm. in defining the right features? I mean, it's easy to say optimize PPA. That's what we, we say in the entire industry, but it's a lot more, it's a lot harder than that, especially when you're leading like Micron is. So what's your process? How do you know how, how to get ahead of the curve? I'm sure you're working with companies like Qualcomm, but you also have an independent process as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So leadership is a culture, and Micron's been a leader in memory and storage for 40 years, over 40 years now. Um, and that culture drives us, for example, as you were just speaking, Ziad, yeah. about low power. We were first yeah. to market on the one beta technology, right? Mm -hmm. And we're working closely with Qualcomm on doing that. By shrinking our nodes faster than the rest of the industry, we can give the end users that low power that you're looking for, which yeah. of course translates to longer battery life, right? Well, the and crazy part is, is there's low power and low battery life, but these new smartphones have an inordinate amount of performance That's they can right. crank out, That's right. crank out too. That's right. Uh, and, and it is amazing when you're developing, again, that, that special triad that, that I talked about in, in, in the beginning, what developers mm -hmm. uh, can do with that. So in a way, the two of you are setting this canvas for developers where you have to make these decisions three to five years in advance and have a thesis of what they can do without even actually knowing what will come out on the, on the other end. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. And you know, I'm an engineer by trade. Um, and when I, when I think about what I do every day on the hardware side, it's really about getting out of the way. We've developed these platforms mm -hmm. together right. to allow the application to be there. For example, uh, we talked about LPDDR5X, you know, which, which just launched. One thing we all know these days is your camera takes these night pictures. As right. Yad was talking about, to take a night picture, you have the image processors are going, you have AI going, all of these different parts of the SOC are turned on at the same time. Well, guess what? Your bottleneck is actually the LPD RAM. So when we came out with that LPD RAM 5X spec, right. we had no idea it was going to be used for <laughs> image processing at night. Yeah. But you can actually see that how many times have you sat there and you're trying to take that picture, it takes three, four seconds. Well, you move to the LPD dr 5X with our newest products together, it gets done in a couple seconds. Yeah. Right. So things like that, we, again, the culture of innovation is driving the platforms for the next generations, like you're saying, before we even know it's there. Right. So with AI, for instance, you mentioned that, and Ziad, I know you spend yeah. a lot of time focused on that. Right. That's sort of a use case of the future. We, of course, have metaverse use cases. We have yep. so many things. Like, how do you collaborate to sort of make sure that you're able to be on the front edge yeah. to be able to support those? Because you know, you kind of, you know, like I said, you kind of alluded to, you don't always know. But yeah. we know. I mean, yeah. at this point, we know that AI uh, is going to change everything. I mean, right. you know, uh, stable diffusion, we're playing with this at your booth, seeing on device, at the edge, um, you know, generative AI. I was drawing, uh, what was it, <laughs> unicorns in a wheat field? <laughs> I wonder uh, why. You were doing, <laughs> you were doing leprechaun, what was a leprechaun doing? A leprechaun in a field of roses. I don't know. Hey, I was trying to stump this billion parameter model, right? right? But uh, sure enough, it cranks out. It yeah. did a pretty good job. Yeah. It, it looked remarkably like me. Uh, <laughs> but the 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 overall kind of, how do you yeah. get ahead of this stuff? Because yeah. I feel like in some ways we're just trying to keep up. Yeah, I think what we of course do is there's a lot of modeling and everything that goes behind it, right? I mean, we know yeah. what our camera spec is going to look like. We, are, we know what our artificial intelligence capability is. But you know, what we don't know is, yes, AI is going to be big. What we don't normally know is, how big of a model do I need to make it work with? 
Exactly. So it's usually the question is how much bandwidth do we need? As much as we can have many a times. But of course, we need to make sure that we have very good reasons on what are the concurrent use cases that I'm planning to do inside the SOC. And again, you know, you mentioned DDR as being one of the critical parts in the chain. There are multiple parts in the chain. Right. And many a time your SOC, and you know this well, is going to be the weakest link that you have in that chain. So we of course need to make sure that the, the accelerators, the memory, the, the internal uh, plumbing inside the chip is capable of running at that, cave, at that level. And that's why in this particular case, we think the large language models, for example, or billion plus parameter models are here to stay. We'll actually have more of these use cases and you'll see us talk about it a lot more in coming days, but it requires us to be able to store these models into the DDR, be able to move it into the SOC and back. And that requires the fastest and most capable uh, memory bandwidth and memory solutions possible. Chris, you must be loving this. I mean, you know, there was, uh, sure there's a billion parameters uh, model on the device today, but uh, we interviewed Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon, where he was, you know, speculating about uh, 10 or 20x right. the size of, of these models. I mean, that's, that's got to get you thinking as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And you know, it gets me thinking as an end user too. Right, not just as a developer. Because where we were talking actually just before we yeah. came on camera, right? What what is clear that is happening in the next the next years is all the compute power that's happening in the cloud is coming to your hands. Right. Right. And so people are not gonna wanna wait for you know your data to go to the cloud to translate and come back to be able to read the menu, right? And today you can do that in your hands. Pretty soon you're gonna be able to translate your your voice in real time. Right? All of these things driving that you're driving with your great processors do require faster memory. And kind of bringing it back around to our partnership, we actually work at pre-silicon levels. So our engineers are working with Qualcomm engineers to validate the processors, to validate the interconnectivity, making sure that these um, bandwidths are achievable before we even tape out. So you're talking three, five years in advance. Right. We're talking about what's coming next and making sure that all of that is capable. And again, for me, it's really as an end user and watching my children grow and yeah. thinking about this digital companion that they're holding. Right, they're going to be learning from this thing through their life. It's going to be learning from them yeah. through its life, and how you know the world is really going to expand, and, and digital and human interaction has become more and more and more powerful. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about uh, kind of cutting edge use cases, software mm -hmm. in in this this example, mm -hmm. uh, stable diffusion, generative AI, and then the future. But also we're seeing a, a kind of a sea shift in form factors. Absolutely. Okay. And if there's anything that challenges PPA, right, it's a form factor. How do I cool this thing? You know, is it going to have a much smaller battery? So mm -hmm. how, how do you get ahead? How are the two of you mm -hmm. uh, addressing uh, unique smartphone form factors? So I can, I can start. Sure. So, but basically the idea is we of course work together. You know that the volume inside the smartphone is pristine landscape, right? I mean, oh, you, yes. each and every millimeter cube is essentially looked at and miniaturized as much as is possible. So we work very closely with partners like Micron, especially when they're talking about POP-like solutions to be able to make it work inside a smartphone. But you can imagine as we go into augmented reality, for example, right. these challenges become much, much more complex. Not only do we have to now make it fit in a very small form factor like glasses, but we got to fit in the battery, and that requires even greater collaboration between us and partners like Micron to come up with more compact solutions. And what it also means is that, you know, the billion parameter model we're talking about, today it's running on a smartphone, still has a decent sized battery. Sure. Now you can imagine in the future we'll have it run on a augmented reality glasses because you want to augment your view in the case of Dan, you know, in your case with the <laughs> unicorns, for example. Yeah. Uh, but my point is we'll have that ability to be able to do all of that on a small form factor device. But yeah. it requires, again, much better collaboration with all of our partners. For Micron, we're really excited. For Everybody this year is talking about foldable phones, right? I remember the first one in 2018. I've been a big fan of them. You mentioned earlier uh, that you want to be able to have all of those apps open at the same time, and pretty soon right. you're going to be able to cut and paste and view across the phone. That's going to drive a lot more capacity requirements. You're just going to need a lot more DRAM to be able to do that, to act like your traditional PC. But then going even further into form factors, one thing I'm really excited about is automotive. We don't even think of that as a mobile form factor, but is there any better mobile form factor? Driving, it's definitely you know, mobile. 100K miles yeah, an hour on the right. Autobahn or whatever. <laughs> um, and you know, again, coming down to future usage models where your phone and your car are truly syncing, I'm sure I'm not the only one here who does a lot of meetings in his car. 
right? Well, well I always, I always pull off safely. the side of the road. <laughs> on the always. side of the road, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, right, and I'm definitely not letting my car drive itself <laughs> while I'm doing that. Um, but you know, actually integrating the phone with the car, right? The form factors are going to be changed, going to be moving across. Why, you know, I'm going to be able to take my favorite networking and actually run it on the car in real time yes. so I can see it here while I'm on the side of the road. Right. Um, these things that we're working mm -hmm. on, the interoperability between all these devices, really, really exciting what's coming down the pipe. I love it. Yeah, the, the, the automotive space is really interesting and, and we've seen it get a lot better, but there still seems like such a big opportunity. We know, what do I say, about 20% of the vehicle bomb uh, by 2030 will be just semiconductors. Uh, and I, I actually can see that getting higher when you actually add in all the possibilities that chip makers can, can provide. So, you know, we're kind of coming to the end here and I kind of want to do that what else question, but I'm going to get a little more specific than just what else. And I'm yeah. going to ask you guys this, you know, Pat, you and I have been in a lot of meetings, some CEO meetings this week, talked to, you know, I remember Chuck Robbins and CEO uh, at Cisco, Right. the sustainability topic kept coming up. Chip makers have a big role to play because power is such a hard uh, it's such a hard problem to solve without sacrificing performance. Yep. Is there anything through the partnerships that are created between companies like Qualcomm and Micron that could really lean on practical, measurable, uh, you know, lowering of power consumption while still giving those great experiences? Yeah, I mean, we work a lot on this, of course. I mean, it comes through also from what our consumers and you know customers are asking for. They actually want the device to be able to do more, like I said, but they right. want to be able to do it for longer. What that means is we are very focused on always reducing power consumption. But that, as we take, especially from a Qualcomm perspective, we've taken our milliwatt and microwatt thought process, but we've taken that into automotive. Right. We've taken that into PCs. And that actually offers a unique advantage for us to really do a lot more on the sustainability side because now those same devices are really skimping on power and using far less of power than what they used to do in the past. And I think that opportunity in general is how we, of course, you know, when there's a need from a customer, it's even easier for us to be able to do that. So actually the customer requirement and what we need for sustainability are actually aligned. And of course, DDR yeah. being a component that's very critical for working of all of these different businesses means that as we get better power consumption on memory and others, it becomes a total solution power reduction, which is very, very key for everything that we do. That's absolutely important to us. And in fact, um, for all the folks out there that aren't me memory geeks, in the mobile device, we have LP DDR, which is low power DDR. That's very specifically developed for mobile phones, but you're now seeing that in the client space. Right. As, you know, these devices are getting thinner and lighter and you want longer battery life. They're using these low power devices uh, for sustainability as well as just as you're saying for mm -hmm. the user. Yeah. We offer the full gambit of, gambit of products, but power is going to become more and more important, even in the data centers, right? Yeah. Where you're spending all this money to cool the data center. Well, if you keep following Moore's law and you use these low power specifications, you're going to spend less money there. So the total cost of ownership, the total cost for us as consumers is going to come down. That's a good way, uh, good way to wrap up the show. Chris and Zion, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you're you. literally the, uh, your combined superpowers of the triad, okay? <laughs> Again, compute, <laughs> connectivity, storage and memory. Wait a second, is that, is that a quad? <laughs> and I'm calling it a triad? What's going on here? Did I, did I jip Micron here? I hope not. Don't forget input output. And how there you we go. The <laughs> I know, I know. We'll all hear about that later from somebody else, I'm sure. But anyways, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for appreciate having it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it very much. Always nice right, to talk to you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of this 6.5 here at the Micron booth. We had Qualcomm. We had Micron. We were talking all about the way storage and memory and processing come together to drive great experiences. But for this episode, Pat, we got to say goodbye. We hope everybody hits that subscribe button, joins us for all of our episodes. We'll see you later.